Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan back again with another video and today I'm going to be showing you this cool new camera. This cool new camera is stupid. So over the last year or so, I've been getting really into still photography again, um, specifically shooting on my old Canon AE-1 film camera. Really awesome uh, sort of entry level 35 millimeter film camera. This is actually uh, a hand-me-down uh, that used to be my grandparents' camera and I really hadn't shot on it much until the last year where I've been really falling in love with this camera. So I've collected a few different lenses for it. It's been really fun going out, just doing some street photography, candid style, street photography, landscapes, that sort of thing, um, nature photography. Yeah, just really enjoying the process that film allows you to have, which is just something really minimalistic, manual adjustment of settings, um, the excitement you get from shooting a photo and not actually seeing it develop for a week or two or a month, you know? However, the main thing that this camera doesn't do so good, as well as my uh, mirrorless, my full frame mirrorless camera, was just having like a, a daily still photo camera that I can take with me literally wherever I go. Something that's even more compact than this. And that's where I stumbled upon this camera. This is the Roly 35. It's a film camera that, as you can see, is super small and compact and lightweight, but it still shoots um, full-size 35mm film. The thing that makes this so compact is the, the built-in collapsible 40mm fixed lens. So I wanted to sort of do, sort of do a review video of this camera, um, show you all of its functions and how it works, all of its quirks, um, and yeah, I think it's it's really cool as a daily carry around uh, sort of camera bring wherever you go um, that allows you to still really have fun with film photography. So the first kind of interesting quirk about how this camera functions is the way you load the film into it. So there's a little switch on the bottom that when you flick that, it unlocks uh, the entire uh, case of the camera, the entire body. and the whole bottom of the camera pulls away from the top of the camera like so. So that's the little cover and then there's the rest of the camera. The other weird quirk about loading film is usually the canister of film goes on the left side and you run it across uh, the gate onto the right side where the take-up spool is. This is backwards. Um, you basically load the film in upside down and roll it across to the take-up spool which is on the left. Um, there's this little uh, cover that flips down um, over the gate, so you flip that down, put the, the film there, and then you cover it back up again. Uh, and that's what holds the film in place. For removing the film from the camera, uh, it gets even more weird. <laughs> what I'm used to on my Canon AE-1, for instance, is you hit a uh, sort of unlock button on the bottom, this little button here, and then it allows you to uh, basically start winding the film back into the canister. And you can see on the film counter on the top, the number counting backwards back to zero. Once it's back to zero, then you know your film is rewound all the way and you're good to, uh, you know, to open up the door and take your film out. On the Roly 35, the film counter, which is on the bottom, does not rewind as you uh, spin the film back into it. So you basically have to go by feel when you when you feel the, the tension release essentially, that's when you know the film is rolled back up all the way. So just something to be aware of that I haven't heard any other reviewer mention, but the protocol for removing the film with this is there's another switch on the back right here with a, a letter R next to it. You flip that up, the R is for reverse. So that allows you to reverse the film. It basically unlocks the film so you can reverse it. So you flip that up, you go to the bottom, uh, there's a little lever you remove, and then you spin that lever clockwise. And you should feel a lot of tension spinning that lever, and then eventually the tension gives up. You hear a little sound of the film being released inside, and then you can close that. You can open the camera back up again and take your film out. As far as adjusting your exposure, so your aperture and your shutter, that happens on the two dials in the front. So the dial on the left is your shutter dial, the dial on your right is your aperture dial. Um, and what's cool about those being on the front of the camera is when you hold it down below eye level and you look at the camera, 
from above and you twist those dials, that's where, where you can see the numbers it inscribed on the dials themselves. So you can have the camera like below you, not up at eye level, but below you looking down at the camera adjusting uh, the settings. The light meter is also on the top. So when you're holding it down here, you can see the light meter, you can see your aperture reading and your shutter reading. Uh, and then the final really weird quirk with this camera is the fact that it's it's sort of like a rangefinder in that you have the viewfinder um, on the corner of the camera, but you're not looking through the lens. So it's a completely separate optical view that you're looking through, sort of like, uh, like a disposable point and shoot camera. Um, so when you look through the viewfinder, you're not actually seeing what the lens is seeing. Uh, but the viewfinder does give you uh, markings for the same field of view, so you're still able to compose. But as far as seeing your focus, uh, you can't see what the lens is focused on. The only way you can focus this lens is by the focus marks that are on the lens, uh, the distance marks. The nice thing is it does have a little scale for your aperture depth of field, so it'll tell you uh, how much depth of field you get at f8 or f16 and so on. So some call that zone focusing, others call that range focusing, but essentially it's just focusing by estimating distance um, with your judgment, setting the lens to that and taking the picture. Um, so the way to ensure really sharp uh, critical focus images is by stopping down the lens a bit. Um, if you shoot wide open at 3.5, uh, which is the fastest that this lens goes, your depth of field is a lot more shallow, so you just have to be a lot more uh, confident of exactly how far away your subject is. Another thing I should mention is the battery situation for the light meter. Um, this was one of the most confusing things for me when I bought the camera or when I was researching before I bought the camera. Uh, the batteries that this camera used to use back when it was originally manufactured, it's an outdated battery technology that just doesn't exist. So there's other batteries you can get that are replacements that will fit inside the camera. So I'll quickly show you how to put the battery in and in the description I'll um, have a little note of which batteries that I bought and which batteries that I use in this. But basically the way you access the batteries in this is by opening the camera and behind where you load the film canister there's a little silver cap and you can basically unscrew that with your fingertip just by twisting. And a few more quick tips for when you're taking pictures. Um, your hand placement is really important when you're setting your exposure and also when you're taking the picture. So uh, keep in mind that the, the little light meter sensor is this little black dot right there. And so when you're holding the camera down here and you're looking at your light meter and you're adjusting your settings, make sure you're not covering that. Otherwise, you know, you're not metering anything. And also when you're taking a picture, remember that since the viewfinder isn't actually seeing what the lens is seeing, um, make sure that your fingers aren't in front of the lens in any way. That would be a very rookie mistake, so you don't wanna do that. Um, ask me how I know. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so the one lens filter that I have is a little like 1.5 stop um, yellow lens filter. Uh, yellow filter for black and white photography. So this is literally, it cuts about one and a half stops and you can screw it right on the front of the camera here. It's a tiny, cute little lens filter. Screw it right on there. Um, the filter size is 24 millimeters, so the, uh, the thread size. So when you're looking for filters on eBay, look for 24 millimeter thread size um, front diameter uh, lens filters. Um, so yeah, this is, like I said, this is a yellow filter. And what this allows you to do is with black and white photography, um, if you want more contrast in your, in your blue skies, this will just knock down the exposure of those blue skies because it's, it's yellow, it's the opposite. So, uh, and with black and white, you can uh, get away with cool tricks like that. It's a beautiful little camera. It takes beautiful photos with lots of character and you get to shoot on your favorite film stocks. So it's great. And with the collapsible lens, it allows me to basically store this in a pocket um, probably not a pants pocket, but a coat pocket for sure. Always have a camera on me that can shoot film wherever I go, no matter where I am, whether I'm out at the grocery store, getting lunch with my friends at the bar, or just out on a walk through the neighborhood without having to lug a big old camera with me around my neck. 
So now is the point in the video where you get to walk around with me as I take some photos and I shot some street style stuff as well as took it to the beach later on too. So you'll get to see all the pictures that I took, uh, well most of the good ones anyway. Um, and my favorite part about shooting with this camera is just how simplified and pure the process is. It's just shutter, aperture, and focus and I find myself spending less time messing with the settings and more time just walking around and being present in the world around me and observing my surroundings and observing all the little details and that's really the best part about photography isn't really messing with the camera but it's actually being present with the world around you. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, there's something about shooting film on a purely mechanical camera that's just so satisfying and more enjoyable than digital. Um, when you're looking through the viewfinder and you're just seeing the world, you're seeing life not through a digital screen, but seeing like the, the light as it actually is, um, yeah, there's just something really beautiful and pure about it and allows you to just really appreciate the process. The other thing that I didn't mention earlier in the review, um, which is actually a really big deal, is how quiet the shutter is. This is one of the quietest shutters uh, of any cameras that I've ever heard. And sure, on a digital camera, uh, on, a, on a mirrorless camera, for instance, my Panasonic S1H, I can, I can mute the, the fake shutter noise, so it's completely silent. Uh, but it's still a really big, bulky camera that is uh, very easy to notice. It's not very discreet. And with this tiny little discreet camera, uh, most people that you're walking past don't even see that you're even holding a camera. It's so small. And it's so quiet that you can snap photos and they don't even hear you taking pictures. So when it comes to street photography, candid stuff where you want to kind of lay low a little bit, um, it allows you to kind of get up in there a little bit more and um, go a little bit more unnoticed and get a little bit more uh, candid reactions from the people you're taking photos of. So anyway, uh, that's the video. Uh, the last few photos that you'll see here I forgot to record a POV of, but uh, I really like these photos, so I wanted to include them. Uh, I would love to do more still photography stuff on this channel um, in addition to filmmaking stuff. So uh, if you would enjoy that, let me know. And yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. <laughs> one more. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much. Of course. What do you want? Ready? Got it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> it's my third of the day, sure, yeah, no you're problem. The <laughs> um, oh, that's nice right there, like that. Okay, ready? And I'll do one more. Let's see. Hello. And oh, we missed the bird. Okay. There you go. I got a few. No problem.